All right, with uh, proteins and biochemistry in general and organic chemistry in general, remember that these exist in you know, our physical world, so they have three-dimensional shape, and so their geometry is very important to their function. Let's take a look at our polypeptide bond, which is an amide. Right, and so um, if you were thinking about um, this question, what is the shape or the hybridization of this nitrogen, right? Maybe back in Gen Chem, you might, it might've been acceptable to call that an sp 3 nitrogen, but remember this nitrogen can participate in resonance, right? So we can make this a pi bond and then kick this pi bond up here. And in this case, this is indeed a significant resonance contributor. And what you can see in this structure, the nitrogen is an sp 2 And remember if it, if it can hybridize, we're gonna to go to the one that's higher in, uh, in P value. And so this nitrogen, this carbon, and this oxygen are all sp2 hybridized. And so what that means is that they're planar. And since this is a double bond right here, right? We've got a double bond right here. It means that there's either no rotation or that there's less rotation, right? There's a much more significant barrier to rotation than if this was just a regular single bond. But no slash in parentheses, less rotation. And so if we think about it, there can be two main geometries this can adopt. Right, in this case, right, we have our amide right here. And our R groups are on opposite sides of one another. So we call these this the S trans configuration. And it can um, equilibrate with the other form. But again, there is a significant barrier to this rotation. And this would be the S cis conformer. If you think about which one's more stable, right, in the cis uh, conformer, we've got that steric repulsion. And so the trans is what's preferred.